Hello, this is a Bluthner Style 8 Grand Piano made in 1913 and fully restored in 2013 by Bluthners themselves. Now the piano's uh, got one piece ivory, so it must have been put on earlier than that because uh, one piece ivory you only get before about 1980. Now, it's a very warm colour and as you can see the rosewood grain is uh, very startling right round the piano and uh, as it's just been done there's no fading on the piano at all. Now here's the back end of the piano and uh, moving up to the lid which is open at the moment you can see uh, there's a stunning rosewood grain throughout. Both Bluesters and Steinways I think pro produce the uh, most beautiful looking rosewood pianos. Now it's had a new tuning block, that's the block of wood which the tuning pins go into, it's called a rest plank as well. And you can often tell that because they're small tuning pins uh, when it's been restrung, normally you have to put bigger tuning pins in, but if you change the tuning block then you don't have to change the size of the tuning pin. But you can't always tell because some restorers still put larger pins in anyway, so it's not a, a definite thing. But if it has got small pins and uh, the strings are new, then the tuning block has probably been replaced. Now, I've taken the screws out of the tuning block just to be able to show you the new tuning block. So uh, if you want to take a tuning block out, by the way, just take these screws off and then we also have to take these screws off. I see screws here, not all Blutners you have to take these off, but um, this age of Blutner, 1913, you take this one off and lift it up. So lifting up the music desk runners, we can now lift off the tuning block. So you can see it going up there. Sorry, I meant the rail in front of the tuning block. And here, if we look down now, this is interesting because Blutners uh, earlier on used to, because originally Blutners, they paint this black uh, where the tuning block is. But um, when they put the new one on, they don't paint it over black. So it's obvious it's a new one, but here they have. And you can see it's a new one because you get the layers here. This is, uh, uh, there's only about three layers if it's the original, but here we have multi-layer delignate tuning block. You can see all the layers there. So that's definitely been on there tend to put uh, uh, delignate tuning blocks on. Um, and uh, certainly a great idea for all grand pianos to put new tuning blocks on. Bluteners are easiest to do because they come out with the frame. Uh, looking inside, Bluteners have also replaced the uh, original patent action, which you get in 1913 Bluteners for um, a, a roller action, standard modern roller action. Um, I can't see any, any sign of them having done it though, strangely enough. They must have done it because it, that, of that age, they were only patent actions. Here's another one in stock uh, that we have in stock with Price with the Renner action, but you can see the keys. Uh, they've got this little mark on where the L-shaped springs were. So I'm not quite sure how Bluton has managed to do the other one without having the mark on it. Uh, back to the one that Bluton has restored, you see, uh, the key. It hasn't, the keys haven't been replaced. That's definitely not the case. I, I'm sure of that because they've taken some of the leads out of the keys. If we lift a key up, oh, that one's got a lead in, but let's look at this sharp. Uh, that one's got one too. We'll find one in a minute. Uh, there's a shark that's had the lead taken out uh, when they were re-weighting the action. And they've refitted, here you see, Arbel Bluth and the Hammers. Uh, shanks and rollers have been done as well, uh, just as we would ourselves. And we would also fit, these are special hammers, Bluth they use themselves. Uh, so Arbel and Bluth have been working together for some time. And looking at the top of the hammers, no wear, just about see the string line in there. So that's enough for us to voice for the unaccorded. If you see the three strings marks there where it's hit the string. Um, so that that's, means we can voice for the unaccorded without having to artificially make them. That's good. I forgot to mention this is a Bluth the Alicot um, stringing uh, strung piano, which means it has the extra string here that uh, vibrates in sympathy with the other three. Uh, that's, uh, so style eight has Alicot stringing, style seven doesn't. Um, I don't really think it's the main factor when you're choosing a Bluton or whether you get Alicot or not. Um, I've had style seven sound as good as style eight, so it's not necessarily a factor, it's more down to the individual piano and whether you like the touch and tone of it. As you'd expect, it's a tremendous uh, uh, stringing here. These are German, uh, German wound strings and uh, are very well done. So that's a Bluthner Style 8 grand piano, 190 centimetres long, six foot three, and been restored in great detail by Bluthner themselves. It has a touch, I'm really impressed with the touch. Very important for musicians to have a, a touch that they feel at home with. And the tone is, well, Bluth is associated with mellow, it's got plenty of power in it too. So you can have great contrast. It's really everything you could want in a piano, designed at the, the height of Bluteness uh, expertise, and it's also had a, a replacement roller action in. If you don't, um, it, 
patent actions are really good on blueness too, so it's not essential to replace the patent, but if it's been done, it suits musicians very often to have it done. So if you've got a blutner of this age and you'd like the action replaced, it's very expensive, but the, the worthwhile, I would say. Having said that, the patent action, it has, has a, a nice feel to it as well. So that's um, something you have to sort of try them both and decide, I think. Thank you very much for listening.